Welcome back to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham, right here on Talk TV. Now, it's time for Taking the Mic. It has variously been described as our proudest achievement, the jewel in our nation's crown, the envy of the world, and, if you believe Chancellor Jeremy Hunt, the one thing that makes most of us proud to be British. I'm talking, of course, about the NHS. But in 2024, even the Labour Party, which still speaks about our health service as if it were some kind of national religion, has started to criticise the way it's run and why it needs to be reformed. Ever since COVID, the NHS has been on its knees. Only this week we learned that at least one third of the workforce is off sick on any given week. It's been hobbled by strikes for the best part of the last year, but they've hardly made any difference to the efficiency and inefficiency in the system, which is now reaching critical mass. Only a few weeks ago in Bristol, we saw hundreds of people queuing up outside a new dental practice because they had all been unable to access a dentist in the area for years. It's clear that the NHS management have now brought the business to breaking point. Just as we heard that, 7.5 million people are now waiting for hospital treatment, and that's 300,000 more than this time last year, it's not going to get better anytime soon. Even Health Secretary Victoria Atkins admitted that people are waiting in pain and anguish. We absolutely understand that, she said. And these are mostly routine operations like hip replacements, hernia repairs and diagnostic scans like x-rays. Of course, the first stop to getting any of that kind of treatment is the GP surgery. Again this month, we learned that some GPs are making an absolute fortune. Average salaries now close to £120,000 a year. And yet, people can't get appointments. In Broccoli in South London yesterday, dozens of people formed a queue outside a doctor's surgery in the hopes of getting to see, you guessed it, an actual doctor. They got there at the crack of dawn complaining that telephone appointments were impossible to get as the line was constantly engaged. Anna Maria Callahan, one of the hopeful, said, I've got three appointments to make for me, my child and my elderly mum. Issues that should have been seen weeks ago that are now much worse than they were. It's an absolute shambles. A shambles indeed. When she got to the front of the queue, she was told there were no more slots that day and she'd have to come back tomorrow. The truth of the matter is, and you won't want to hear this anywhere else, there are millions more people in this country now than there were when the NHS decided how many GPs they would need to look after them. One in 20 people now have to wait a month for an appointment. Can anyone see the connection? Because I can.